We're on. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks very much for uh, joining us. Uh, uh, my name is Manju Ramanathpura. I'm a CTO and uh, senior director, primarily focusing on all things open source and networking related planning effort. With me, I have uh, Tim Lofink. He's uh, director of product management. He focuses on automation and orchestration related products. Um, thanks very much for uh, joining us. And uh, more than that, thank you for uh, your continued support for OpenStack. Um, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about what are we doing uh, from a HTA, HTS and Hitachi's perspective for OpenStack. And then Tim is going to talk about what are we doing from a automation and orchestration perspective that plugs in with OpenStack. So with that, um, let's get forward. Um, so the first slide I have is a little bit more broader theme. What are we doing with open source in general? Uh, we're really not that new to open source. Um, we've been participating mm -hmm. with Linux Foundation for a while. Um, and now uh, we are on OpenStack Foundation as well. Uh, both Linux Foundation and OpenStack, we are um, gold members. Um, we are also fortunate to be on the board of directors for both uh, Linux Foundation and OpenStack. Um, some of you, specifically those who are following the big data, business integration, you probably also have heard about Pentaho. And Hitachi recently acquired Pentaho. And as you know, Pentaho is all things open source. So everything that we do with respect to Pentaho is in the open source community. Um, what I'm really trying to emphasize is we are truly passionate about open source. We are committed to continue to contribute to open source and help our customers. Um, at the bottom, you also see a few other uh, um, open source communities we have been engaged with. Um, so with that, I want to jump into a little bit more specific to OpenStack. With OpenStack, as I said, we are on the um, uh, we are one of the um, uh, gold members of OpenStack Foundation. Uh, we are also on the OpenStack uh, Board of Directors. I actually represent Hitachi at the OpenStack uh, Board of Directors. Um, in terms of contribution, we do have a significant contribution with Cinder drivers. That's our primary focus, but as you see in this picture, that's only about 25% of our contribution. So we are actually fairly active in other uh, open source projects as well, uh, including projects like Cola, Ironic, Nova, and Manila. And many of our um, employees are also actively participating in OpenStack working groups. Uh, thank you, Paula. And um, you know, we we are really passionate about OpenStack in general. Uh, we want to do whatever we can do from our perspective to continue to support OpenStack. On the right-hand side, you see some of the pie charts. I pulled them from Stack Analytics just uh, last week. Uh, it shows in terms of uh, what are the different projects we've been actively working within OpenStack community and who are some of our uh, community champions. And um, looking from what are we doing specifically in the OpenStack side, our focus has been primarily to make OpenStack ready for enterprise consumption. We focus heavily on how do we make this enterprise class, oops, didn't mean to go there. There you go. Um, we focus more on you know, how do we make the enterprise, uh, uh, enterprise class data services available for OpenStack. Um, as you see at the bottom, these are our leading platforms for block storage, file storage, object storage, and our servers. And in all those cases, we support OpenStack. And our strategy has been to provide this as a foundation and enable customers to use this inside the OpenStack environment and still meet the enterprise SLAs. That's been our primary focus. And uh, OK. There you go. So in terms of our approach, go-to-market perspective, we don't really work on building our own OpenStack distro. We partner with our leading uh, partners, Canonical, Mirantis, Red Hat, as well as Suze. These are our OpenStack distro partners today. As you, I'm sure you are seeing, there is no one distro that fits a specific customer's need. Uh, we understand that very well, and our approach has been to really 
support what our customers need and um, we continue to uh, you know march forward in that direction and from a platform perspective we we do provide just our bare bone infrastructure whether it is storage or server and let our customers consume that within their open stack environment but in addition to that there is a large set of our customers who actually want a single point of contact they want to come to us to you know build us build them a converged infrastructure that they can always contact us if something goes wrong with the infrastructure so in that case we have a product called ucp we've been uh, you know providing ucp for vmware and uh, microsoft stack and now we are working on expanding that to support open stack as well so customers have options you know they could either buy our storage server platforms integrate with their open stack or they could buy a converged stack from us and reach out to us for all all the support and services and when we look from both you know whether it is a uh, storage or server drivers or a converged stack our approach is still to partner with the different distro vendors that you see on the left hand side and really hone in on how do we make this 1 plus 1 greater than 2 for our customers so that you know it's an enterprise ready enterprise class mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure with all the bells and whistles from automation and orchestration perspective one of the key challenge we continue to hear from our customer is capex is really not the biggest problem for them it's the opex so we tend to focus more on opex side how do we make automation better how do we make or orchestration better so that our customers can reduce their opex Uh, spending so with that i'm going to hand over uh, the presentation to tim tim is going to talk about uh, what are we doing from automation and orchestration perspective. perfect thanks manju hello everybody my name is tim lofink i'm director of software product management at hitachi data systems and as manju says i'm going to talk about a technology preview that we're doing here um, at the show it's actually being shown at our booth so please after this stop by and uh, and check it out And this is the integration between uh, OpenStack and an automation tool that we have with an HDS called uh, Hitachi Automation Director. In the technology preview, there's actually two of these that we're doing. Um, one is from the bottom up and the other one's from the top down to try to do infrastructure as a service or platform as a service. And so from the bottom up, um, we're trying to uh, provide additional value um, into an OpenStack environment, uh, providing additional controls, and abstraction and flexibility by integration of automation through the sender driver itself. And on the top, we're actually trying to do end-to-end -end automation, uh, leveraging OpenStack environment itself and orchestrating the environment and actually going beyond where we're actually provisioning the infrastructure, the environment, and actually deploying applications. All of this done through the uh, Hitachi Automation Director tool, integrating into the different components of OpenStack. And we'll talk about each one of these in a little bit more detail. Before I go into the detail, let me give you a background on Hitachi Automation Director and what this tool provides and does so you understand how they're integrated together and the capabilities that you're going to see coming from Automation Director versus OpenStack environment itself. So HAD provides first and foremost a service catalog of uh, best practice automated workflows for provisioning HDS infrastructure. So it's about simplifying automating provisioning of HDS storage. Um, in here, there's a lot of controls that we have um, from an administrator standpoint for HAD. So um, when you actually configure this as an administrator, you can restrict uh, who can access it, what levels of uh, variables that people can change, how much of the resource they can provision from um, the infrastructure as well. And then there's uh, um, abstraction and intelligence that we have. So the service catalog is a very simple interface where a user will go and, and ask for a, a request storage. Give me gold storage. From, the, from a production environment. And or, I'm going to provision for Oracle today. Give me, the, give me all the volumes needed for Oracle. And so basically, it's give me gold storage from production. And what happens after that request is executed, the intelligence engine takes over. So it will go through, look at all the available resources in the environment, match it up to the appropriate tiers that it's looking for. And if there's multiple pools that are available, it will actually determine by looking at capacity, utilization, as well as performance, as to which is the best location to actually provision from or into. So we're trying to distribute the workload in the infrastructure at the time of provisioning, so additional value. Um, 
The uh, HAD also has a REST-based API for integration into, and so this is what you'll see with the, the first uh, um, technology preview, is we're integrating with the REST-based API of HAD to actually do the things that we're doing. And then we also have another tool within uh, HAD which is called the Service Builder. The Service Builder provides flexibility and functionality of extending those automated workflows beyond HDS infrastructure. So that allows us to create these more complex workflows which you'll see in the, uh, in the second technology preview. Got it. Okay, so the first one, as I was talking about, what we've done here is to uh, create a sender driver, and that sender driver connects to HAD using the REST-based API. And it's gathering information about all of the available automated workflows that we've created. Those automated workflows in HAD are pre-configured to do certain things. Give me uh, platinum storage with replication. Give me gold storage with replication coming from uh, you know, an external uh, array as well. So you're able to go in as an HAD administrator and create these automated workflows. They will be represented up into Horizon through the sender driver itself. So in, in Horizon, what you'll see is the Hitachi gold with replication show up, very basic. But underneath, it's a, it's a lot more complex activity that's happening. So when that, that uh, tier is requested through Horizon, it goes through sender, makes the API calls, calling the appropriate automation workflow in HAD, and does its you know, intelligent provisioning, gets the results, and pulls that back uh, up into Horizon, representing that information that it was complete. So as I was saying, this provides additional flexibility and control. So you're able to control how much is being requested, where things are being pulled from, uh, um, through that automation wor automated workflow. Uh, plus it provides flexibility to be able to make changes basically on the fly. So if you want to provision up or offer up new tiers of storage through the sender driver, very easy. You go into HAD, create additional services that represent those new tiers of storage, and they're automatically seen up in, uh, in Horizon for those new tiers. Again, control flexibility is what we're trying to show here in this technology preview. The second uh, technology preview that we have is the end-to-end -end provisioning uh, of an entire uh, web application in an HA environment. And so this one's a little bit more complex. And as I mentioned before, what we've done here is we leveraged the service builder tool of HAD. It created additional workflow components connecting to Neutron, Nova, um, Cinder, and the like to actually call into OpenStack, set up the infrastructure, so provision out the VMs, set up the network, put it into a high availability configuration, and then it goes off and uh, um, deploys the applications and get those up and running. So what we're trying to do here is show you the flexibility and power that it has as far as being extended uh, ab above and beyond just storage and how it can actually work and leverage OpenStack to help automate as Manju was talking about, helping trying to reduce that OpEx that you have in managing your, your infrastructure, make it repeatable, um, uh, error-free, for example, as well. Now, in this uh, technology preview as well, one of the other things that we've done, and I, and I talked about it at the very beginning, where we provided the intelligence, right, and abstraction. So we're, when we're provisioning storage, it looks for the best place to provision the storage, the least utilized, and does the provisioning at that time. So with this use case for this whole end-to-end -end web application um, in a clustered environment, we've done the same thing. We've integrated uh, with Solometer as an example to gather performance information from the environment. So at the time of provisioning, it will go through and determine where is that best location to deploy this, to set this up. Um, and again, as I said, these demonstrations are available um, at our booth across the hall over there. So please come and visit us, uh, and uh, thank you very much for your time. Do you want to? Thank you. Yeah. And if there's any questions, we're happy to take questions as well. HMB. HSP. HSP. So um, I don't. So I can. Uh, yeah, I can. I can talk about it. Yes, um, we do actually support HSP. HSP supports. Um, Northbound uh, OpenStack APIs for um, uh, Nova. It supports Glance. It supports Keystone. Um, yes, so that's our scale-out platform. Um, I'm, I'm bundling them under the converged right now. 
uh, it's essentially how customers are consuming it, you know, but it's a scale out, um, you know, converged infrastructure designed for, you know, large scale um, analytics purposes like big data analytics, and that platform does support OpenStack northbound APIs. Anything else? Um, yeah. I'm happy to talk to you offline a little bit more if you'd like to. Yeah. Thank you guys. Enjoy the show.